What's going on, everybody? Welcome in to the Wednesday, March 27th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, terrible, terrible, terrible mass casualties feared as box ship takes out bridge in Baltimore. Other coal and exports blocked. This is just a, a terrible disaster. We'll cover everything coming out of Baltimore. Next up, as AI booms, land near nuclear power plants becomes hot real estate. Interesting. Lo- what do they <laughs> always pun. say? Location, location, location. Next hot up, real Germany estate. used to be uh, Germany used to be Europe's economic powerhouse and is fast becoming today's sick man of Europe. Absolutely <laughs> love that headline. Next up, European economies limped into 2024. And finally, ESG and BlackRock's Larry Fink ditches ESG for, quote, energy pragmatism. Talk about the 180 of the century. Stu will then toss it over to me. I will quickly cover what's going on in the oil and gas markets. Touch on briefly what's going on with prices and the crazy EIA um, or API, EIA crude oil inventory estimates. And then we'll let you guys get on out of here and start your day. As always, I am Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. Let's go ahead and kick it off. Hey, uh, hey, this is a disaster, and uh, it's really sad to hear what uh, is going on. Mass casualties feared as box ship takes out bridge in Baltimore. Here's where I didn't know this, Michael. Coal, other coal and exports blocked. Uh, Miss Producer, if you could have her uh, bring in, you'll see unbaffle me. Baltimore, it, there is a uh, map of this uh, bay. Baltimore is now effectively cut off for traffic by sea. Major alt route for I-95 around Baltimore is also cut off. This is a disaster for several different reasons. I did not know that, but this bridge, Michael, right there with a little circle around it, that's the bridge that was built for one reason, hauling uh, chemicals around baltimore to go to the north and guess what that's gasoline that's diesel that's chemicals they don't like pipelines so that's a that is how everything rolls so this is significant for energy going north unbelievable yeah, it's it's an absolute disaster. I mean, we can only be thankful that it happened at 1.30 a.m. and not 6.30 a.m. during, the, you know, a massive commute oh. or else there would have been a lot more a lot more tragedy. Um, we, we were praying for everybody out there in Baltimore. But, yes, I, I, I'm with you. I didn't know this was a, a big shipping, um, specifically coal, coal shipping corridor. So, you know, you immediately saw the price of coal go ahead and or, or coal per ton spike slightly. We also saw some stocks relative to um to uh uh shipping around that Baltimore area and, under Armour five Constant to Energy to seven five to seven years to replace it. Yeah, absolutely. So absolute yeah. disaster. Ooh. Um but and, and we're just praying for everybody effective out there. But yeah, um, you know, that we're still using coal and it's it's gonna get cut off here. So all right, let's move to AI. Okay, hey, let's go rolling around the corner. And I, and I love the pun on this one. As AI booms, land near nuclear power plants become hot real estate, like glowing when yep. you, you know, nice. Okay, um, all data centers are energy hungry, but with more watt greedy AI workloads on the horizon, nuclear power has fresh appeal. Uh, Bill Gates actually uh, made a trip to Houston to get to Texas. He's going to put some data centers here in Texas. Do you know why? Because they got cheap energy. Uh, Exactly. And all of a sudden, Bill Gates is all in on uh, nuclear. So I think it's pretty funny. According to the Hartford uh, Current, Northeast Energy has secured $1.6 billion to construct the switching station and bit barns, which will span 1.2 million square feet in total. It'll spend an equivalent sum on 25,000 and 35,000 servers. Holy smokes, that's a lot of servers. 
Well, you know, your favorite company, Microsoft, they're also actively exploring the use of small modular reactors with the idea that they can, instead of buying land right next to nuclear facilities, they can go ahead and just deploy them in whatever. So you got to give them a little bit, a um, little bit credit for that. We have seen AWS or Amazon Web Services um, dip their toe into the nuclear market. They agreed last month um, to purchase Cumulus, Cumulus Data uh atomic data centers for about 650 million so you know what do they say location 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 and get glowing you know woohoo uh, let's go to the next one here dude uh germany used to be europe's economic powerhouse it is fast becoming today's sick man of europe you know what's sad is so goes Europe, uh, so goes Germany, so goes the EU's. But uh, now it's just really horrible. They've done this yep. to themselves. Uh, the German economy continues to be under fire from self-inflicted idiotic idioticies. Uh, in addition to the notoriously high energy prices and mounting bureau bureaucratic burdens on both the EU and national level, you know, Berlin now has to deal with the eco-terrorism and a wave of strikes in the transportation sector. The farmers are now pig piling in on this. According to Dr. Hagen Lich of the German Economic Institute, 2024 could become a record year for strikes in Germany nobody's happy in germany <laughs> no and they've again as you said they've become a real trendsetter for for what's going on in europe um i love that quote that starts out the article patriotism love of country makes me want to vomit interesting <laughs> typical sentiment of the greens what can you say uh, you know, it, here it is. There's a, the last line in the thing says, supposedly making trains run on time again was supposedly a cause for Mussolini, Mussolini's takeover of Italy. If this is true, then the fascist threat for Germany might not come from the AFD, but from the country's unions. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Ooh. So let's go to the European economies. Uh, this is from uh, our buddies over there at Geopolitical Futures. Uh, there, uh, several uh, countries in Europe are going to be uh, holding uh, elections. Slovakia, Lithuania, and Romania are electing pres uh, presidents. As well, uh, parliaments are going to be Belgium, Croatia, Austria, and EU voters will also choose a new European par parliament. They've got some serious political hoo-ha going over there. But if you look at the the GDP growth, Denmark, uh, it's at zero. Now, zero let's throw growth. that image up right now, if you don't mind, Miss Producer, the, the update yep. 20, Q4 2023. It's not good. I no. mean, D Denmark is, is the high animal in there at two. <laughs> For wow. a GDP you know, growth. George, no. George Freeman does a great job over there, geopolitical futures. We love him. Oh, absolutely. And, and when you sit back and take a look, uh, Q4 2023 is not good. Uh, and you take a look at Ireland, it's negative 3.4% GDP growth. Um, and then Ugh. take a look at Poland, it's flat. France, 0 0.01 GDP. Italy, 0 0.02. Um and Germany's not even on that list. <laughs> <laughs> Which is crazy to think about. I mean, Europe is 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 in shambles right now. Let's let's talk Larry Fink. Speaking of shambles, Larry Fink's uh BlackRock's Larry Fink ditches ESG for energy pragmatism. I'll tell you what, this guy, he's been um uh, this quote is unbelievable. Now the demand for clean energy is being amplified by something else. A focus on energy security. Huh. Hmm. Mr. Fink wrote, I'm hearing more leaders talk about decarbonization and energy security together under the joint banner of what you might call energy pragmatism. You got to be kidding me. This is what we've been talking about for three years. You can have your energy security. You can take care of people, have the low cost of, of energy, 
and now he's waking up. Well, it's 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 really it's really like he's just put you know licking his finger and, and and putting it out there on the wind and seeing where the wind is blowing. Oh, ESG, yeah, let's go over here. Oh, wait, wait, no, it's not working. Let's go over here, Texas. Don't pull out. We're still in oil and gas, which they are. They never left. So you can say that again. It it all comes down to money, folks. The Larry Fink doesn't care about energy pragmatism. He doesn't care about ESG. He doesn't care about oil and gas. The dude. Wants to make money. You could talk about other stuff maybe he wants to do, but we'll save that for Stu's conspiracy podcast um, later on down right. the month. But there's, yeah. so, but all he wants is, sp- you know, all BlackRock's doing is they just want money. They, two- and they'll, and they'll, they'll do whatever it takes. They don't care. ESG, non ESG, coal, whatever. There's two paragraphs in here. Currently holds. More than 300 billion in fossil fuel companies on behalf of clients, 170 billion, which are U.S. energy firms, according to Mr. Fink. Here's the next one. To climate activists, BlackRock is fueling the climate change. To conservatives, it's destroying the oil and gas industries. (laughs) They have now chosen their bed with the ESG story, and it ain't good. He literally says we've got 300 billion fossil fuel companies. Yep. He said that for yes. two years ago. It was all divest. Two years ago, it was all divest. I was working for a client who was trying to get Larry Fink on the podcast to talk about their divestment in oil and gas. Whoop! Can we get him on the podcast now to talk about their reinvestment into oil and gas? Unbelievable. No. Uh, here's a quote. We invest in these energy companies for one simple reason. It's our clients' money, he said. That's part of being an asset manager. We follow our clients' mandates. What was he smoking this morning? I'm sorry. I mean, uh, opioids? I don't know. This is Whatever they're doing down there in uh, in Miami, it was probably a little bit of booger sugar, as we like to say. Oh, nice. I have no idea. Me and Hunter are not buddies, so I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> all right off to you all right well we'll go ahead and, and and before we dive into finance guys we'll pay the bills here as always uh the news and analysis you just heard is brought to you by the world's greatest website www.energynewsbeat.com the best place for all your energy and oil and gas news Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed everything you need to know to be at the tip of the spear when it comes to the oil and gas business check out the description below links to all of the articles you can find out um exactly um uh, also the timestamps you can jump back and forth it's absolutely incredible guys um appreciate the team uh keeping up dashboard.energynewsbeat.com the best place for all your data and energy news combo some really cool stuff uh, partnerships we're working on so we'll, we'll we'll announce those here in a bit but We'll go ahead and, and and dive on into to finance, guys. Oil prices, you know, they settled a little bit lower today. They're currently sitting, um, currently sitting at eighty one sixty two. That's about four tenths off the top line. Brent oil um, down eight tenths of a percentage point. Uh, natural gas pops a little bit. They're up. It's up about seventeen cents a dollar uh, seventy eight. Mainly as that contract rolls over um, to the next one. So we're really just seeing kind of a rollover contract there. Not much, um, in the way of, of, of decent, um, natural gas sentiment. We also saw the overall markets down about two tenths of a percentage point. NASDAQ down three tenths of a percentage point kind of, you know, really there, there's two things moving oil prices, uh, today, you know, there's a really the fallout from this, you know, you know, week long Ukrainian attack on Russian refining, which means we're going to see a lot more we see a lot less oil reach the market, you know, uh, you know, uh, clearly these sanctions aren't working or if Ukrainian Russian ref- or if you can't or Russian refiners are going to be hit by Ukraine. Hey, I'm the only one who to have a speech impediment on this show. You're too, you're too young to not have a speech impediment. I know. Well, hey, sometimes, you know, you get, you know, I'm, you get tongue twisted a little bit. Um, but no, it's, it's, you know, that sentiment of, of what's going on out of Russia in, in, in terms of, you know, supply specifically being shut down on top of some of the, the, the geopolitical tensions that are happening right now in the the Middle East with 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 Israel and Palestine. Um, 
it, it makes for a frothy future. We did see the API come out today and guesstimate uh, the EIA crude oil inventories. If we can throw this image up, 9.33 million barrel build estimate out of the API. Woo! Woo! Last week was 1.5 million draw. Now we're up at 9.3. You know, this is this is worse than Larry Fink. We're down one month, up one week. It's crazy. Yeah. That seesaw. That does not make sense to me. But what it does mean is that you're probably having the EIA uh, fictitiously put numbers. Now they got to catch them back up is what that sounds like to me. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, that, it, it, that has happened before. It, I mean, it, it is now a fact that that happened. You know, I, I'm not making that one up. No, no, yes, you, you, you are not. Don't worry about that. What else you got, Stu? I'm done. It was a pretty chill day for. Uh, uh, I'm done. I'm not, having a, I'm not having a conspiracy theory moment here. No, you're good. You're good. We'll save it for you. You get one podcast a month, but we just let you go hog wild with everything. Oh no, uh, I don't need no uh, agencies showing up on my doorstep because all I know is public information. <laughs> They're already listening. Don't worry. <laughs> Yes, they are, by the way. <laughs> I know. I, I've unfortunately seen the stats. <laughs> uh, all right. We appreciate all the great feedback we're getting. Yeah, no. Um, we'll we'll let you get out of here early, guys. Uh, appreciate you checking us out. Energynewsbeat.com. Again, check us out there for Stuart Turner. I'm Michael Tanner. We'll see you tomorrow, folks. Thank <laughs> you.